Parliament plays an important role in the affairs of a country or a nation. One of its main roles is making and passing laws of the country. Parliament also holds the executive in governments, as well as state institutions accountable. In this video, we will explain how Parliament works. And discuss the role of Parliament, by listing some of its main functions and duties. Welcome back, to Public Administration 101. Proudly brought to you by, Kano Consultants. For professional advice, you can trust. As indicated, in this video, we will explain how Parliament works. By first defining, what exactly is Parliament? And further explain, the two Houses of Parliament in South Africa. We will then discuss, how each of these two Houses of Parliament are composed. As well as, what qualifies a person, to be a Member of Parliament in South Africa. We will then list and explain, the five functions of Parliament in South Africa. And then conclude, by explaining why we need Parliament. Before we get into today's video, if you are watching this on YouTube, we would like to remind you, to please check out our other videos on public administration, under this channel. And don't forget to like this video, and subscribe for more content. You can also support the channel, by signing up to our Patreon page, for early releases of these videos, and for more content. Check out the link to our Patreon page, on the description below. Now, let us get into today's video. As a starting point, let us define what Parliament is. Parliament is an institution, made up of a group of elected members, who are responsible for making and changing laws of a country. As well as, ensuring that the executives in government are held accountable. In the South African context, Parliament is made up of two houses, namely, the National Assembly, and the National Council of Provinces, also known as the NCOP, the National Assembly's main role, is to represent the electorate. The National Assembly also chooses the President, and provides a platform for members of Parliament, to debate on critical issues, which affect the country. Members of the National Assembly also debate and pass laws, as well as, oversee the executives in government, by holding them accountable. The National Council of Provinces on the other hand, represents the provinces, to ensure that, provincial interests are taken into account, in the national sphere of government. Members also participates in the passing of laws, in certain circumstances. The NCOP also provides its members, with a forum for debating, provincial issues. As well as, ensures that local government is represented, at a national level. Both Houses of Parliament, also participate in the process of, debating, and voting on the national budget. In the next section, we will discuss, how these two Houses of Parliament, are constituted, in terms of the South African Constitution. The National Assembly consists of, no fewer than 350 and no more than 400 women and men, elected as members, in terms of an electoral system, that is, 1, prescribed by national legislation. 2, is based on the national common voters role. 3, provides for a minimum voting age of 18 years. And 4, results in proportional representation. The NCOP on the other hand, consists of 90 provincial delegates. That is, 10 delegates for each of the 9 provinces. A provincial delegation consists of 6 permanent delegates, as well as, 4 special delegates. The premier of a province is the head of the province's delegation. However, he or she can select any other delegate, to lead the delegation, in his or her absence. So, who qualifies to be a member of parliament in South Africa? Section 47 of the South African Constitution provides that every citizen who is qualified to vote for the National Assembly is eligible to be a member of the National Assembly, except for the following. 
anyone, who is appointed by, or is in the service of the state, and receives remuneration, for that appointment or service, this excludes, the president, deputy president, ministers, and deputy ministers, as well as, other office bearers whose functions are compatible with the functions of parliament, and such services have been declared. The list of people not qualified to be members of the National Assembly also includes permanent delegates to the National Council of Provinces, or members of a provincial legislature, or members in the municipal council, as well as anyone considered as an unrehabilitated insolvent, or anyone declared to be of unsound mind by a South African court, as well as anyone who is convicted of an offence and sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment, without the option of a fine. Either in South Africa, or outside South Africa, if such conduct would have been an offence in South Africa. According to the Constitution, a member of Parliament can also lose, his or her membership in Parliament. A member loses membership of the National Assembly if he, or she, ceases to be eligible or is absent from the National Assembly without permission, as prescribed by the rules and orders of the National Assembly which prescribe for loss of membership. Or such member, ceases to be a member of the political party that nominated him, or her, as a member of the National Assembly. Where vacancies in the National Assembly occur, they must be filled, in terms of national legislation. The mandate of the South African Parliament is set out in the Constitution, which provides that Parliament will perform the following functions. Parliament is therefore tasked with passing legislation or laws, scrutinizing and overseeing executive action by keeping oversight of the executive and organs of state, participating in international forums, regionally, continentally, and internationally. Parliament also participates in promotes, and oversee cooperation of government. Another vital function of Parliament is, to facilitate public participation, and the involvement of the public, in the legislative process, and other processes of government. To find out more, on public participation as a concept, and some of the forms, as well as, benefits of public participation, please check out this video under our channel. We will pin the link to this video, in the comments section below. Before we continue, if you enjoy any of our content, and would like to support the channel, you can do so by signing up to our Patreon page. You can find the link, in the description below this video. If you are watching this, on YouTube, you can also subscribe to our channel, by searching for, Kano Consultants. Now back to today's video. The National Assembly is elected for a term of five years. This means that, the National Assembly is dissolved when its terms expires after five years, from the date of being elected. The National Assembly may also be dissolved, in terms of Section 50 of the Constitution. This section provides that, the President must dissolve the National Assembly, in the instance where, the National Assembly has adopted a resolution to dissolve, with a supporting vote of a majority of its members. And three years have passed, since the National Assembly was elected. Section 50 also provides that, the acting president must dissolve the National Assembly if, there is a vacancy in the office of president. And the National Assembly fails, to elect a new president, within 30 days after the vacancy occurred. In conclusion, here are some of the reasons, why we need Parliament. And why Parliament is such an important institution, in the proper running of a country. Parliament is considered the ultimate authority for making laws in most countries. This means that, Parliament has the power to, abolish an existing law. Replace an abolished law with a new law. Amend the existing law. And create new laws. In most countries, Parliament has some control over those who run the government. Public funds are also controlled by Parliament, meaning that, government will only have the authority to spend public money, after Parliament sanctions it. 
Parliament can also request any information from those in government and hold them accountable for any of their actions or decisions. And last but not least, Parliament also provides its members with an opportunity and forum to debate and discuss national and international matters that impacts the country. We've come to the end of this video on the core functions of Parliament and how Parliament works. So, thank you for watching. Please take time to check out our other videos on public administration and public finance under this channel where we discuss various topics relating to public administration, as well as public management and the management of the public sector, including the running of government. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content. And remember to turn on the notification button to make sure that you don't miss out when we post new videos. You can also connect with us by following us on social media at Consult Kano and continue the conversation by leaving us a comment below or tagging us on social media using the hashtag consult Kano. Thank you again for watching. Join us again next time for another video. Until then, check out these other videos. Kano Consultants. For professional advice, you can trust.